and I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of the Kingdom of Kingdom of Morocco to introduce a statement by the head of government. Shukran, Thank you, Madam President. It is my honor to introduce the pre-recorded statement delivered by His Excellency, the Head of Government. <laughs> President of the General Assembly, Mr. Secretary General, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to congratulate Mr. Volkan Boskir on his election as President of the 75th Session of the General Assembly. I wish him all the best as he seeks to revitalize our organization. I express the Kingdom's appreciation to Mr. Tijani Mohammed Bandi for ensuring the General Assembly would continue its work despite the difficult circumstances resulting from the COVID-19 pandemic. I seize this opportunity to commend the role played by the Secretary General, Mr. Antonio Guterres, under these difficult circumstances. We support his outstanding leadership of the COVID-19 response, especially the call for an immediate global ceasefire and the global humanitarian response plan. Mr. President, this year's session is highly important as the world confronts a deadly and highly contagious pandemic whose global impact has jeopardized societies and institutions and posed unprecedented challenges to the whole world. The pandemic has thrown into sharp relief three interlinked crises facing our world since the beginning of the decade. Uncontrolled environmental degradation, widening socioeconomic gaps and growing poverty, and institutional dysfunction in the face of the pandemic, as well as ineffective and inconsistent international cooperation. Mr. President, the dangerous effects of these crises and the need for urgent solutions were not the result of COVID-19. They have dominated our world since the early days of the millennium. At the 2002 World Summit on Sustainable Development, while calling for renewed global solidarity, His Majesty King Mohammed VI wondered whether the various disruptions and violent crises across the world are enough to convince detractors that sustainable development is in everyone's interest and a collective responsibility. We have nine years left to achieve the SDGs. The success of our 2030 agenda will depend on the choices we make today. Our commitment is all the more important in the middle of a pandemic, as it affects first and foremost the most vulnerable, especially in Africa. COVID-19 has laid bare the inequalities that have deepened over decades. Had we made enough progress in implementing the SDGs, the implications of the pandemic would have, been, would have been less severe. Morocco, along with a number of countries, believes that increasing vulnerabilities should be a real incentive to redouble our efforts and to reconsider our development plans to ensure that gains made before are not lost. Based on this vision, we in Morocco have set out to reimagine a new integrated development approach under the leadership of His Majesty the King. Mr. President, 75 years ago, the founders of this organization laid down the pillars of a new global order rooted in cooperation and solidarity. They sought to end and prevent wars and create the conditions required for development and well-being. Given our firm belief in these noble values, we decided to join the United Nations in 1956 
which was one of the first sovereign decisions the kingdom made after its independence. That vision is still as relevant as ever. Even though the United Nations has secured great gains for humanity in the past, we must continue to uphold these same founding principles today in the face of critical global challenges. It is now time more than ever before to undertake reforms that would make the United Nations system more attuned to global developments and more capable of responding swiftly to crises such as COVID-19. The time for statements is over. Now is the time for informed and result-oriented actions. Multilateralism is still alive. As reflected in the concrete initiatives taken to combat this crisis, building a multilateral system is not a luxury. It is a necessity to ensure continued international cooperation, which should be our compass when confronting current and future threats in a post-COVID-19 world. In this regard, establishing a global health security system has become an imperative. The Secretary General made that clear when he said that COVID-19 has uncovered the fractures in the weak social structure which we have built with our own hands. The pandemic has shown the extent of damage that new diseases can cause to national health systems and the need for emergency preparedness based on an approach that brings together all stakeholders and all communities. Our response to the pandemic in Morocco has been guided by the steady hand of His Majesty the King. Our proactive and preventive measures have prioritized the health of our citizens and mobilized all institutions and the whole society to address the health emergency. Our support for the Secretary General's initiatives and relevant Security Council and General Assembly resolutions reflects our belief in the ability of the United Nations to coordinate and promote all forms of international cooperation in the face of this all-encompassing crisis. As Chair of the ECOSOC Humanitarian Affairs segment, the Kingdom of Morocco launched a call for action in support of the humanitarian response to COVID-19, which was backed by 171 countries from all regional groups, as well as the African Union and the European Union. The call was inspired by the diplomatic and humanitarian principles of the, King, of the Kingdom and His Majesty. We believe in the urgent need of providing COVID-19 vaccines and treatments in a just and equal manner. This would be the most concrete example of a unified global health system and a real test for international cooperation. We must also ensure renewed and more flexible resilience, reform international health regulations, and adopt sustainable funding mechanisms. To this end, Morocco will organize, in cooperation with Rwanda, the World Health Organization, and the World Bank, a high-level meeting on diplomacy for health, security, and emergency preparedness next year in Marrakesh. Morocco has also joined the Chilean initiative to adopt a new and flexible legal instrument that would ensure effective global health emergency preparedness. Mr. President, in addition to unequal vulnerabilities within societies and within and between countries and continents, the pandemic has also shown that much of what we had believed to be true before had proven to be wrong. This includes the link between underdevelopment and vulnerability, which we had always taken for granted. Many of the dire expectations some had for Africa at the beginning of the pandemic did not materialize. Africa has managed to meet the challenge on its own, relying on its strong population, creative youth, and able governments. In line with the spirit of solidarity, 
that exemplifies South-South cooperation, His Majesty the King launched a practical initiative to assist African countries throughout the stages of response. As part of that initiative, Morocco established air bridges with around 20 African countries to move Moroccan-made pharmaceutical and medical assistance. The urgency of the pandemic and its socio-economic implications should not distract us from the complicated and multidimensional challenges facing Africa, including the debt crisis. Morocco calls on the international financial institutions and partners to adopt and implement concrete guidelines to reduce the debt of those countries and to allow them to limit the impact of the pandemic on their development. Global economic recovery must be a top priority for the international community. The impact of the pandemic also requires innovative solutions for the financing of development. Mr. President, even though the pandemic has brought into focus some of the main issues on the UN agenda, we should not forget other remaining challenges, notably climate change, counterterrorism, migration, and peacekeeping. In this regard, we commend the United Nations and peacekeeping operations contributing countries for their efforts to adapt to COVID-19, allowing 100,000 peacekeepers deployed in 13 operations to continue their work in various conflict zones. Morocco believes in the importance of reforming peacekeeping operations, given the complexities of contemporary conflicts, and we remain committed to achieving the goals of the Action for Peacekeeping initiative. In this regard, Morocco and France will organize, in cooperation with the United Nations, the Second Ministerial Conference on Peacekeeping in Francophone Countries. Mr. President, the Kingdom of Morocco continues to embrace the Charter Principles of Peaceful Settlement of Disputes and Respect for National Sovereignty and Territorial Integrity of States. We remain committed to a definitive solution to the regional dispute over the Moroccan Sahara, in line with our territorial integrity and national sovereignty. Our position is unambiguous. No definitive political solution would succeed unless it meets the following four criteria. These are recognizing the full sovereignty of Morocco over its desert and the autonomy plan as the only solution to this contrived conflict, ensuring the full participation of all parties in the search for a definitive solution to this contrived conflict ensuring full respect for the principles and norms set forth by the Security Council in its resolutions since 2007, including that a solution can only be political, realistic, practicable, enduring, and based on compromise, rejecting any proposal that goes beyond those principles. Such proposals, which only seek to steer the political process away from the terms of reference determined by the Council, have been rejected by the Security Council and the Secretary General more than 20 years ago. The political process under the sole sponsorship of the United Nations has seen new momentum. Two roundtable meetings were held in Geneva in December 2018 and March 2019, bringing together for the first time all of the parties concerned. It is particularly encouraging that the Security Council consider this process the only path towards a political, realistic, practicable, and enduring solution based on compromise. We are deeply concerned at the harrowing humanitarian situation of those living in the camps in Tindouf. The host country has put an armed secessionist group in charge of the camps, in flagrant violation of its international obligations under the 1951 Refugee Convention, as well as other human rights-related international conventions and international humanitarian law. 
As COVID-19 continues to spread, we have every reason to worry about the fate of those people stranded inside camps run by an armed group that has no legal status under international law. It is time for the international community to take decisive action and compel the host country to allow UNHCR to conduct a registration exercise that will be in line with international refugee law and the urgent calls of the Security Council in all of its resolutions since 2011. Registration is important to put an end to the 40-year-long diversion of humanitarian assistance that was meant for those people stranded inside the camps of Tinduf. Mr. President, the security of Morocco is linked to the security of Libya, with which we have a common history and future. Nine years into the crisis in Libya, the security and humanitarian situation continues to deteriorate as a result of foreign interference, including military intervention. The only solution is a political one, decided by Libyans themselves, with the support of the international community and without foreign interference, as confirmed at the Sherat meeting. We remain committed to providing a neutral forum for dialogue between the Libyan parties. Over the second week of September, we hosted in Bosnica meetings between the High State Council and the Tobruk-based House of Representatives, culminating in a comprehensive agreement on transparent and objective mechanisms to fill key positions. Mr. President, failure to settle the Palestinian question and to resume the Middle East peace process is a source of grave concern. There can be no just or lasting peace unless the Palestinian people can exercise their legitimate right to establish an independent and viable Palestinian state with Jerusalem as its capital. We categorically reject all of the unilateral measures taken by the Israeli authorities in the occupied Palestinian territories, whether in the West Bank or in Jerusalem. Those measures only fuel tension and instability in the region. As chair of the OIC Jerusalem Committee, his Majesty the King has always called for protecting Jerusalem as humanity's common heritage and a symbol for mutual respect, dialogue, and peaceful coexistence among the three Abrahamic religions. This was confirmed in the Jerusalem Appeal that His Majesty and His Holiness the Pope signed in Rabat on March 30, 2019. We express our heartfelt condolences and support to Lebanon in the aftermath of the explosion at Beirut Airport, or rather Beirut Port, and the ensuing material and human losses. At the request of His Majesty, the Kingdom has provided medical and humanitarian assistance to the Lebanese people in the hope of alleviating their suffering. Mr. President, we must turn the pandemic into an opportunity to rebuild a more efficient and effective multilateral system. We must take stock fully of the failures of the multilateral system as well as its achievements in the face of the crisis and build on good practices in the future. We must refocus multilateral action on solidarity, cooperation and responsibility and we must end conflicts and take appropriate measures through genuine and practical multilateral initiatives. Morocco, true to the principle of multilateralism, remains committed to working with like-minded countries to create a more just, united, and open global system. This was the commitment His Majesty the King made at the Millennium Summit. 
stressing that, as we embark on a new millennium, it is our solemn duty to push the boundaries of humanity while acting in justice and showing mercy in solidarity. Thank you, Mr. President. On behalf of the General Assembly, I wish to thank His Excellency, the Head of Government of the Kingdom of Morocco, for his statement.